course. All right, you guys, welcome. Happy Monday night. Thank you so much for hopping on live and or watching the recording. So have any of you guys had to, let's say, work really hard to get something you want? Let's say maybe a relationship. Like, is there anyone you had to chase, perhaps a spouse or someone that you had to chase really hard to um, win over? Anyone? 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 Adele, yes, was a chaser. Okay. Anyone else? Was anyone else the chaser in the re in a relationship? Had to put some work in. Dolly. Don't you I just mean chase or chase or? <laughs> yeah, the chase, chase, chaser, and the chasey. Er, yeah. Er, <laughs> chase er. So um. It was when we, some of us went to our, the Portland Super Saturday and we had um, spent the afternoon with Joel Freeman and his um, fiance. And he said that he was, he had to chase hard. Like he had to, he had to work it to get this girl that is now he's engaged to be married to. So anyway, I'm going to talk tonight about the fact that anything worthwhile takes time. Anything worthwhile takes time. And you might want to grab a pen. It's great to take notes. Um, you don't have to. So let's take it to the level of business. Traditional business owners, not like us, we're not doing traditional business. Traditional business owners expect to break even by one year. They expect to pay back their initial investments in the first five years of opening their business. This is based on Eric Warre's GoPro. I'm focusing tonight on a little bit of a piece of chapter 11 from the book GoPro. So traditional business owners expect that. Network marketers, which is the industry that we're in, network marketers expect to get their money back in month number one, they expect to make a profit in month number two, and they expect to get rich by month number three. And if they don't get rich by month number three, they blame it on network marketing. So we do have a better way, network marketing is a better way for creating a life by design, a life where you can pay to have your laundry folded or, you know, that kind of thing, <laughs> to pay your house cleaner to cook dinner for you so you can do what you want with your life, but it's not overnight. We're not, we don't, this isn't magic beans. Um, so to earn more, we need to become more. That's an Eric Worre quote. To earn more, we need to become more. So rather than believing these falsehoods, like the product sells itself, or we can get rich quick, or um, there's no work involved, that there's not real work involved, those things are falsehoods, and they are unrealistic expectations. So we want to abandon those falsehoods, those philosophies, and get to work on us, get to work on us. And we don't want to rely on, nor should we rely on luck, timing, or positioning. Luck, timing, or positioning. Or our upline. Um, so Eric Warre has this formula that he has after studying and really becoming the expert on, on network marketing as a profession. He's created this formula, which is the one, three, five, seven. And it's his rule that in one, this is what it really takes. This is what, as you're coming on, and some of you tonight are still kind of new to us, and it's so great that you're on tonight, and hi, Don, and setting your expectations um, as a new coach is so critical to your longevity and your adherence with us. So at, you can expect at the one-year mark to be really competent and profitable one year in network marketing to really really know the basics and cover your expenses and still be learning three years into this coaching thing if you consistently put forth part-time effort 
you consistently put forth part-time effort, part-time work with a consistent effort, um, you can expect after three years to be able to leave your full-time and make this full-time, if that's even on your dream board. Maybe it's not. Maybe you absolutely love Embers is on. Embers really loves what she does. It's not in her dream to be able to quit her job someday and walk away. So I'm not suggesting that you have to have the goal of quitting your full-time job, but according to Eric Warre, with consistent part-time work for three years, you should be able to walk away from your J-O-B. Um, and in five years of consistent work, you should be able to have an annual six-figure income. But at that three-year mark, if you're able to flip, this is so consistent with my business too. So much of the principles of this book, now that I've been in this four years, I can see are ring true to me. So I believe him because it's happening. So you should be able to at the three-year mark if you want go full-time. And if you are consistent, five years into that, be making a six-figure or above income. And at seven years of consistent work, then you can really, truly consider yourself an expert in network marketing. So here's what I want to ask you. And it's rhetorical. You don't have to answer out loud unless you feel like it. Um, how old are you? <laughs> How old are you? I just turned 41, so how old are you? How old are you gonna be in seven years? How old are you gonna be in seven years? How old are you gonna be in three years? And Bobby's 26. Bobby's 26. He's he's chatting it, he's chatting it, he's chatting it. So um so think about that three year from now, Mark. So we so so if, if three years away for Adele, for example, um, where would she want to see herself? Where would you want to see yourself? It's just rhetorical. You don't need to answer. Um, but in terms of those being more realistic expectations for network marketing, so we need, we want to become an expert. To become an expert, we have to learn. So I'm going to talk for a little bit about learning and how we can learn and continue to grow. So we can either go through the motions with this business, which believe me is super easy to do, um, or we can refine our skills. Same thing with working out. You can totally go through the motions working out and not really, like really get the most out of a move. We can do the same thing or an exercise. Um, we can totally do that same thing with this business. You can listen to a national wake up call and say, yeah, I listen to a national wake up call. But did you just listen to the National Wake Up Call and say you listen to it? Or did you take, extrapolate something from it and apply it and put it into practice? Um, because it's go, you, we can either go through the motions or we can really, truly continue to refine our skills. So Warre says there's no bad experiences. There's no good experiences. There's only learning experiences. And this takes the pressure off of us and allows us to like let go of the outcome and just and just have more experiences, have more business experiences. Um, the top earners in um, network marketing are active students. They're always trying to grow, always trying to grow. Lou Holt says, "In this world, we are either growing or dying." Um, so, a few tips. We want to model successful behavior. So in this business, they call it duplication, and there's no need for us to reinvent the wheel. Um, you guys have uplines, uh, if not me, that have set forth um, systems for you to follow. Um, so model successful behavior. Study. Study and study audio. So he listened to Jim, one of Jim Rowan's audios five hundred times. Um, I did a mastermind call with there was a there's a guy, um, Nick was on it was the guy, it was what Holly and Adele and Nick actually met this guy. He came on the business presentation webinar that I did and he's an old high school friend of mine. Do you guys remember that? Um, from Chicago and uh, he is a network marketer in a different company and he's very successful. And he wanted to sort of mastermind, he and his wife, with me to kind of see what's working for 
Beachbody versus his company and what's what's we just he just wanted to compare notes of someone else who's successful with multi-level marketing in a different company and one of the things he told me as a best practice is he listens to GoPro it's probably why I'm doing it right now the masterminded with he and his wife he listens to it once a month he listens to the audio book and he teaches his team to listen to GoPro once a month so I actually want to try to listen to it once a quarter or twice a year because as we grow we we hear it differently as we grow we learn we learn differently um, audio is really magical and kind of or personal development but audio is so easy and it's easy to do, be repetitive with more than reading a book and it really reroutes our our compass towards our dreams and um, our, our full potential if you're filling your head with that versus other things you can be putting in your ears when you're driving around or at your house um, and again the company recommends if you don't know maybe you're new and haven't heard as far as personal development it is one of our vital behaviors and the company recommends 10 minutes a day or 10 pages a day the best way, I, I love this, to, I'm going to read this sentence twice. The best way to internalize life-changing information, are you ready, is to attend live events. The best way to internalize life-changing information is to attend live events. Like, this is huge. Emily is a perfect example of it. Um, many of us are a perfect example of it. Uh, we need to be attending live events. Even if you need to have a garage sale or sell something on eBay to afford your plane ticket, um, or you need to, you know, get creative to be able to afford to get there, it's it's proven that live events change the course of your business. It's like putting your business in a pressure cooker. And those that attend live events, um, not only does their business um, grow so much more significantly, but the statistics show, and I'm going to get into this, I think, next week with you, the statistics show that those who attend live events sequentially, like year after year after year, those numbers are compounded even at an even greater rate um, in terms of success. I mean, you can't go to a live event and not see the top coaches there, and there's a reason for that. Um, at live events, all your distractions are removed because you guys can watch Summit in your coach online office, um, like you can watch it, but it's not the same as being there. It's not the same as investing into that process and being there all distractions aside. Um, so I thought it was interesting that he said that. So this is really important. And if you are taking notes, this would be a good section to jot some things down. Um, we want to be focused to become an expert again, just to bring it back home. We're trying to become experts here. Um, we want to become, we, um, we need to focus our energy and time on a very narrow set of skills. And here's what he says they are, and they totally jive with, with what we learn from corporate. Number one, number one, finding prospects. Do you remember last week we talked about that the professionals, the pros, that, that remember we talked about posers and amateurs and pros. And we talked about that Pros keep an active candidate list, so they, they don't have like this warm market, cold market thing. They always have this like pipeline, this fresh water in the stream. They always have, it's never stagnant, it's never cold, uh, it's always growing. It's like a living entity, their active candidate list. So number one, finding prospects. Number two, following up. I mean, does this sound sort of like our vital behaviors? Does this sound familiar? And this is not beach body curriculum. Number three, inviting. Number four, closing. Number four, closing. If we have time during the Q&A after, 
Um, remind me to bring it back to this word and this idea of closing. Um, remind me to, if, if we have time. Um, number five, getting people started right in, the, in your business. And number six, promoting events. I'm going to read them really quickly again. Um, these are the narrow range of skills we need to be working on to become an expert, to become that life by design creator, to become that expert, not overnight, but in time. Number one, finding prospects, that active candidate list. Number two, following up, which means you got to keep track of them so you know who to follow up with and when. And number three, you're inviting. Number four, you're closing. Number five, you're getting people started right. And number six, you're promoting events. So our events, in case you're new to our whole thing, our corporate events are Super Saturdays. They're quarterly. You can find one in your area, no matter where you are, or you can host one. So you can get yourself to a Super Saturday. Everyone can. Um, number two, Coach Summit. Um, that's our annual convention. There's another one that's an offshoot called Platinum Edge, um, which I'll give more information on later, like later this year. Right now, I just want you focusing on Summit, and if that's a possibility for you, and Super Saturdays, um, and we can talk later some other time, too, about what success club trips are, um, but really our main live events that you should be going to and promoting amongst your um, your coaches as you are able to build a team is Super Saturdays and Summit. Um, so we have to master these six skills before adding to any of our business to-do list. So when you think about how you spend your time as a uh, with your business, um, I mean, are you, this is a rhetorical question too, you don't need to answer, but are you doing things that aren't on that list with your valuable time? Because if you are, you shouldn't be. <laughs> and I've, I've been there and I, I get distracted. Um, we can make excuses just like it's just like working out. So when I was preparing this part of the presentation, I honestly thought about a push up. And I thought about how people do push ups and they bring their head down forward. Right. Right. Like we all know that. Right. They do. People suck at push ups and they drop their head down. Why do they do that? They do it because their body is trying to cheat and make the work easier. And if you don't drop your head down, you actually have to get deeper into your push-up. So you have to work harder. And our body is always trying to think of ways. Uh, it's why on a bicep curl we bring our elbows forward. I mean, I could go on and on and use exercise as an analogy for how our body wants to secretly make everything we do easier. It wants to wimp out. It, we're the same way with our business. So instead of doing those six things with our valuable time, we want to do the head forward push up metaphorically with our business. We want to get lost like doing other things and dinking around on YouTube or whatever and not focusing on those six things on the list. Um, so. Another tip, we need to take action. We need to be people of action, but we need to take action without waiting for complete knowledge. And that's so hard as a new coach and when you're in your first year of the business. I mean, shoot, there's so many things inside Shakeology. Like, do you really know what adaptogens are and phytochemicals? So don't let that stop you from talking about the product. Don't wait until you're an expert. Um, the reason we wait is because we're afraid of being embarrassed. The reason we're afraid of acting and waiting for complete knowledge, maybe it's about the business opportunity, maybe it's about one of our products, is because we're afraid of being embarrassed and looking stupid. So we need to set that aside, that ego, that pride. Um, it is impossible to look good and get better at the same time. It is impossible to look good and get better at the same time. So I'm in Emily and Lindsay's social media um, boot camp right now. And guess what? I took my ego off. Like, I took it away. And I'm like, okay, teach me. Like, if I have a post, like, I want to hear. If it's not very good or you, I don't want to go into that group like, well, here's all my knowledge and expertise. And let me, you know, let me show you guys what I know about social media. No, I want to improve. So I'm going to. I'm going to set aside my look good 
and I want to learn from them because I can see that they're doing some things right. So I'm showing up every day in their social media boot camp with um, like, you know, like humble, like I want to grow, I want to learn. So that's another thing I want you to take away is action. Don't wait for complete knowledge. Don't worry about being embarrassed. It's impossible to look good and grow at the same time. And we want to be people who are growing. I love when you guys ask questions. I think some people are afraid to ask questions like on the team page. And I love it. Ask questions. The coaches that ask the most questions of me are the ones that um, grow the most. Like when I have a coach, a new coach that's asking a bunch of questions, I'm like, oh, I think I got a good one here. I think I got a good coach here. Because they keep asking questions. They're hungry to grow and they're, um, you know, anyway, okay. All right, so um, Eric Worre also says, make a plan, do a plan, and review your results. So it's okay when you um, do something with the business to later look back and be like, ah, oh, that didn't work so well. <laughs> That's not really the best thing. Like, I'm gonna kick that to the curb. So with me, a re an example from last year is the self-paced coach training. I put a lot of time and energy into that, and it just wasn't something that really took off in terms of onboarding, boarding, onboarding successfully our new coaches. For me, for our culture, for my team, for Team Player, it might work well for uh, other teams. I think Lindsay and Emily still use it. I think it works well for them, but it didn't work well for me. So even though I'd invested a lot, I had to review, assess, and be like, no. Um, Christy, uh, my sister, she's been spending a lot of time doing a newsletter, like a lot of time. And she recently, like, she did a self-assessment of her business time and energy, and she's like, I'm not going to do it like that anymore. I'm not going to keep doing a newsletter every week. It's a lot of time, and I don't really know what it's doing for my business. So um, that's a, um, a sign of wisdom and growth. And um, Okay, I have a little bit more to go over with you guys. Thank you for bearing with me. What? This? Sure. It's, oops, I'm sorry. It's medical tape. Um, okay, that's my son, Colton Wave. <laughs> um, okay, so another tip, another tip, another tip. Teaching, teach. Teaching is one of the best ways to learn. So. In terms of this content tonight, how to become an expert and how to manage your time and how to step it up and how to set your expectations and um, this content, um, who do you think is going to learn the most? I'm going to learn the most about this content tonight. I'll tell you why. Because I listened to chapter 11 of GoPro three times to prepare it. I took notes and then I rewrote my notes and now I'm delivering the content. So teach someone. Maybe you have one coach on your team. Maybe you don't have a team yet. Maybe you're just solo still. Maybe you don't have anyone to teach on your team. So find a success partner and teach them some things and they can teach you some things because we all have different skill sets. Embers teaches me stuff all the time, like all the time. And so when you're able to teach something, it imprints on your brain um, so deeply. So um, that's another tip in, term, in terms of becoming an expert in our business is find a way to teach. Um, Lindsay and Emily and Kara, I know, have all led, they've all taught, in a mastermind group for diamonds, diamond coaches in the West region. They all decided to put themselves out there in front of all these other coaches that aren't that we don't know that aren't part of our team and lead a West region diamond call. Like that takes guts. And that they did that last year. Well, after last year, I heard from Brittany Adamson, a regional corporate sales manager for I think right now she's doing four stars. I know, it's awesome. I think right now Brittany's doing four to eight stars in her mentorship. I heard from her the statistics that they didn't have until just this year, about last year. And there was a direct correlation between people that led their mastermind calls, because we have mastermind groups for the different diamond and above ranks. Um, 
there's a direct correlation between those who stepped up, put their name on a list, put themselves out there, and led one of those mastermind calls, um, and whose businesses grew further. Like they're looking at the hard numbers and they saw that direct, and that has to do with they they were teaching, and you become an expert and you learn the most when you teach. Um, and you can't blame the being shy because Lindsay Christensen is shy, and and it, that doesn't make her not a powerful speaker and leader. Okay, so shy people can rock this business. Okay, introverts. Moving on, and almost finished, you guys. The law of association, and I'm sure you've heard this from Jim Rohn, that you'll become the average of the five people you supposed to spend the most time with. So, so if you have pen, write it down. If you don't, think about it in your mind. Who are the five people that you spend the most time with like I'm gonna give you a second because I actually want you to think of some names and faces who are the five people that you associate the most with in your life so this is what I'm gonna say is for real it's a law it's the law of association it's it's not a theory like you can't fight this this is real you become the average of those five people. You think like they think. You act like they act. You talk like they talk. And you earn like they earn. You are the average in those five ways. Think, act, talk, earn. You are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. That's for real. So, some tips there as we wrap up. Number one, Family, friends, who you talk to on the phone? Is she back? She's back. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Ellen, Bobby is trying to make me the host. It made you the host automatically, Connie. No, no, yeah, yes, Zoom Connie did Battles it. Connie is now the host. <laughs> <laughs> he put me on the spot. Bobby. No. Ellen, you're muted. It's on me. That's so funny. It wanted to make Connie the host? I don't know what happened. My internet didn't drop. I don't know. Okay, let me finish. I'll finish, you guys, real quick. I, can't, yeah, I was like... I was, it was getting really choppy here. You were saying, like, it's the law of the five people. Yeah, yeah. It was getting choppy, at least on my computer. And yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll, 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 try to be, I'll try to wrap it up in two minutes. Um... So about, about how we associate, how, did you hear the part about like we are just like them and the way we think and act and earn that stuff you heard? Yes? You can't hear yes. me? Can you not hear me? I can hear you now. It's just I, that part when you were saying that earlier, that was breaking up for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So basically the, the, the law is that we think, act, talk and earn like the five people that we spend the most time with like think act talk and earn okay so he gives these tips and i'm going to be so quick because i'm afraid that i'm going to get dropped again i don't know why i have like full signal i don't know why um number one dissociate with the toxic dissociate with toxic so some people keep you down permanently <laughs> dissociate from them some people you will not they will keep you down Number two, limit associations with negative people that aren't going the direction you want to go and grow. Spend less time with them. Limit your time with people like that. Number three, work to expand associations with people like we are doing with talk and earn. We forget about the earning, and that's such a big part of it. It's like we always automatically assume like you're going to act, talk, think like the other people, and that's how they're going to influence you, but the earning is big. That's big. Mm -hmm. I think that's just one of those taboo subjects like people don't like to talk about their money. Mm -hmm. That's like, ooh, don't talk about my money. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you don't want to think about that because they're like your, they're your friends. So once again, if they're one of those people that settles for that bottom rung and you're like hanging on tightly, you're going to want to meet their pace. Mm -hmm. Right, mom? Right. <laughs> she really <laughs> called me mom. I love it. She calls me mom. Um, okay, I actually changed my internet with that time. So I should be having a totally strong signal because I'm using my data now again. Okay, that's what the price I pay for moving out to the country and having that beautiful view. 
I have crappy internet, so I, I'm on. I can't believe it kept recording. All right, so I don't know if you heard that. Did you hear like dissociate with toxic people and limit your associations? Okay, and then work to expand associations with people who will help you become a better person um, and professional. Work to expand those associations. If you want to be a professional network marketer, um, doesn't it make sense to spend more time with people that possess those skills? Um, so every six months, one to five of the people that are in your circle, hang with the winners. That's right, Luke. Um, every, every six months, one to five of the people in your inner five, your inner circle, um, will change. They'll either move or they'll get a job change or a relationship change that causes like a drift. And so um, he says in GoPro, choose very wisely who replaces them in your life. Find someone who pushes and inspires you. Choose very wisely who you allow in because most it happens every six months, he says to all of us. It happens every six months on average to all of us. And we don't, we're usually not purposeful or calculated or thoughtful or even aware that someone else will slip into that role of being one of our major life shapers. And so he says, choose very wisely on who replaces the people that, you know, whatever, move, get up, move on, whatever. So um, I guess I'm going to really quickly, just really very quickly wrap up. First of all, thank you for staying on. Both times I'm like, when I go back, they're all going to be gone. Um, so thank you for um, being patient with my technical problems tonight. So um, again, just to wrap up, anything worthwhile takes time. We are not a magic beans business. Like it actually is legit work, but it is a better way for if you want to create like a crazy life by design for yourself. Network marketing can and does do, can and does do that, but it's um, it's a slow one, three, five, seven kind of a thing. One year, three years, five years, seven years. Um, Five years being that six-figure year income mark. Five years. Um, and then um, be an active student. Model successful behaviors. Study and use lots of audio when you study. Become someone that teaches because teaching is your best learner. Go to live events. Teach people to go to live events. Um, associate with the best kind of people that you know. Um, focus on a narrow skill set, prospects, following up, inviting, closing, getting people started right, promoting events, and um, um, don't be prideful in your, in your pursuit of learning. Like, we're not going to, we're not going to learn if we're always trying to present ourselves as like the top, you know, know-it-all. Like, I'm learning a lot in Lindsay and Emily's um, camp because I'm going in as a student like that's hungry to learn so I know you guys that's preaching to the choir you guys are already wired that way okay so that's all I've got for you um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut up <laughs> let you guys talk so um, thoughts feedbacks reactions comments I thought that was really awesome because I listen to GoPro but I forgot that part like all of those things I completely forgot just because I haven't at that time I was focusing on other things, you know, like you're saying, and like, it just completely, it's nice to get these little cliff note versions of it. So. Thank you. And it was funny. I forgot I even owned that book until you brought it up last week. I was like, Oh my God, I own that book in two ways, Kindle and on audio. I was like, oh, bust up, back out. And it totally sounds different to me now. Like when I first heard it the first time, I was like. <laughs> I, I messaged Dawn today. I'm like, where, where are you at in GP? Meaning GoPro. I thought she would understand my shorthand. Where are you at in GP? Meaning like, what part are you reading? And she's like, Grant's path? <laughs> yeah. Hey, the bar one. Embers, any comments, questions? Thoughts? No, it was good. I love it. I, I'm i going to listen to it. I, you said to listen to it, so I did right away the next day at work. And it's been a year since I last read it, and, and it resonates more now. And I anticipate that even if I waited a year, like I would be in a different place in my business. I think it's one of those books that keeps giving. Yeah. 
I was going to comment on closing um, because I know all of us are this, we are all like people that are like, I don't want to be salesy and I want people to know that I really care about them and that whole thing. I know we're all so that kind of person. Um, and so the word closing kind of like gives me the EBGBs like closing, like these are human beings. What do you mean closing? Um, I'm not trying to sell a car, but um, I, somewhere I heard, I, I don't know if it was a national wake up call or what, somewhere I heard that like, I, I don't know, maybe Jake can speak to this because he has like does sales in his real, real job, real life. But like, just in the changing a couple of the ways you say something when someone expresses interest can actually close the sale. So like when someone is now a little bit interested, instead of me, I used to sort of just kind of put the ball in their court and be like, I'm here whenever, let me know if you need any more videos, let me know if you want any more information, let me know if you want to start. I just sort of being really passive about it in fear of coming across as pushy, but I don't know. I just have so much more confidence now that anytime our products or our business opportunity is inserted into someone's life, it has the potential of really changing their life for the better. So I have more, now that I've seen that for longer, I have more confidence that this is so for their best interest. So I, I now say like, instead of like, Oh, let me know if you're ready and let me know. I actually say, let's get you started today. I say that, let's start today. Let's do this now. Let's do this tonight before you go to bed. And I think, you know, I read that list of his saying, that's one of the things we need to be doing is closing. And that kind of language has been helping me close. I don't know if anyone has any better, like actual real sales experience to elaborate or expound on that or add to it. Well, just piggy. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I'll just piggyback on with what you said. Um, but you are you're able to make that approach, that direct approach, because you've done the groundwork beforehand. You know, you've asked the right questions. You've created a connection and in a, a relationship with them, and so therefore you can be a little bit more direct like that. Okay. And that's really important. Like I think that's the basis of it. Um, you know, a direct approach like that for someone that still has their guard up is probably going to turn them off really, really quick. But, yeah. but Ellen, you're really good about making that connection and building the trust and asking the right questions. And I think I think all of us could benefit from that sort of approach. So that puts us in the driving seat when we are at the end closing, as you say, like being a little more direct. Like, hey, let's get you started today. That works if you've already done the groundwork, the legwork. Okay. Yeah, Jake did that. When I became a coach uh, at the Insanity Training, uh, Jake was talking to me the entire time, and he did all the groundwork. And then Ellen, without intentionally, <laughs> Ellen ended up doing the clothes the next day because we had some issues. So, uh, just to say that, like, it really is right. there. You know, you had a business plan, you explained it, and yeah. Um, and Jake had told me all about how great it is and all the benefits, <laughs> and <laughs> I spent all this time. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Teamwork. Yes. <laughs> Jake, Jake for the assist. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Well, anything else, guys? Any questions? Don, Erica, Melissa, anybody? Brianna. I do have one question. Michael and I have a question. Of course, we talked tonight, so I came on the call late. But um, in regard to signing up tomorrow for the summit, we can go on at 9 o'clock in the morning and sign up, and we're to sign up under silver. Don. Don, do you want to take that? Can you repeat that question? <laughs> Hi, Don. Hi, Connie. <laughs> Thank you for sending the information this morning, by the way. You're welcome. In regard to signing up, we're permitted to sign up tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock? Yes, Pacific Standard Time. 
Okay, and the team, Team Play Hard, is to sign up under the silver. Under silver? And are there any specifics under that? that Ellen? You uh, no. Um, there aren't. Other than, I think we, Kara and I were able to sign up early, and Kara and I both picked Jolene and Joel for our workout choice. But you guys can, like, you totally can, you don't have to do silver track, you can do whatever you want to do, um, you can do whatever you want to do, silver track will mean you can actually sit together in the, in the sessions, um, so. I have a meeting tomorrow, beginning at 9 o'clock, so I won't be out until 12 o'clock. Does that mean I, that uh, I don't know, it, I mean, I don't know how quickly they will, I think you'll be okay. Will be my guess. Well, well, what I did last year, just to be sure, was I had Emily do it for me. Mm -hmm. I gave her my information because I was teaching at the gym, too. So I was like, here's my information. And she, like, put her credit card information in for a second and then, like, swapped mine just to make – because I guess they asked you for it, even though you're not getting the food or something. I don't remember. Or maybe she messed up. Whatever. It, it got fixed. It was super easy to do. She didn't get charged or anything. But I just had her do it. I gave her my coach ID. I gave her my social – my last four or whatever possible things she might need um because i trust her uh, <laughs> let's start with that um and so that's what i did so that's something you could maybe have if michael's available he can do that for you or whoever um you trust that might be on it um and then just for the workouts like pick whoever you want for that like because i mean like i wanted to do body boosts and i did that and then i did turbo fire with um with Jalene, and that was just for me and so just do whatever you'd enjoy like because emily got max she did max 30 get this this was the coolest thing she did max 30 and it was like too full so then they instead like had her come back again and shanti sh taught again to just like a small group of like 30 people or something like that it was awesome so is that when emily cried oh yeah that's when she ugly cried and recorded it all for us okay and um we're planning to arrive the Saturday or Sunday prior to the event and ever and just take off and go to North Carolina and, and check it out. But we're coming back in, I think Wednesday, and we didn't know if, should we just go ahead and um, rent and reserve a hotel room? To so, make it I, so here's where I'm at right now. This has been an evolving thing in my brain for a while. And then if, if you guys need to get, if you guys need to hop off, you can, but really quickly. I rented a house that will sleep 10 to 12 people, but it's going to be varying levels of com comfort. So I think there's a couple of beds and then some cots and then there's the floor. So I want everyone who can, who wants to come that doesn't have or can't afford a place to stay. I want everyone to be able to have a place where they can at least put a sleeping bag down. So there's other people on the team that have rented like Kara and Christina Mick and Kelsey Fry and Beth, I think they all already have their own hotel rooms. So, and so that's fine. So people can do whatever they want, but we, I want us to hang out as much as possible. There's like 20 of us. I would like us to hang out as much as possible in the evenings and throughout the day together as a group, even if we're all at the house. Um, yeah, totally. Like I want it to be major team building. And also I'm, I'm trying to make it fair. I'm trying to figure out a way to make it fair because I'm basically going to provide housing for people that can fit in the house. But then there's some people that paid out of pocket for a hotel room. So it, it's okay. Really quickly. A lot of coaches of my rank start doing what's called a diamond retreat. And I haven't done that yet. And I'm not going to do that this year. This year I'm going to help people like with their summit housing because that house was expensive to rent and anyway, so that's what I'm working towards. So Connie and Michael, quite honestly, you guys would probably rather be in your own hotel than in our crowded house, but you're welcome to stay in the crowded house. Yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and rent the hotel room. And do you guys have a hotel you recommend? Maybe Bobby does. Bobby, you're the, like the tour master. So just what I remember, um, the the Gaylord, it was just the one that they kind of like have that they talk about the most. That's off site, so you'd, have to, you'd actually have to bus in to and take a shuttle to the actual to where all the events are happening for summit so it might be better to look online and find hotels around i know kara was i stayed with her and she was super on her game about it all so she might be somebody to talk to um to see 
if they know of good hotels and they remember which ones were good. I don't remember that um, last, as much. Last year, Bobby did a um, team call. It wasn't really a team call, but it was a call just for people that were going to go to Summit. He led it and he organized it and he prepared like a very good content for everything we needed to know from A to Z. So it would be awesome if he would do that again for us. Thank you, Bobby. That's doable. I can do that again. But book a hotel before because that's like, this is going to be like right before we get there. Just like schedule events, what to do, how we're going to go about things and what's going on. And the, just kind of that instead um, of the, like plan the hotel earlier though, for sure. So talk to Kara. I think that would be a good idea. She might have some good insight because I didn't, she was in charge of all that last year. Yeah. I just talked and paid her. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for coming on. We should probably shut, shut her down because it's been almost an hour. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Melissa and Erica, you guys are doing so well. Okay. Bye guys.